They say a hustle is how you survive through life every day. And game is a G, adapting to manipulate their environment. See, some folks miss that last part. Maybe they got focused on and then lost in the petty. The mass distractions have plagued them on a daily basis. Look back, they basic, but never forgetting. A pivot point is just a goal beyond reach. Maybe they just aren't ready. Damn, that lost my life, but I'm alive in this shit. Oh, yeah, swear it's so astonishing. Yeah, it's so damn crazy how my mind is rewinding this shit. Oh, it's so astonishing. They hit my phone and ask me, did I learn a lesson? struggle for me with the music industry or just the art in general is finding the inspiration uh, to not force the art that I'm actually making. Uh, a lot of times the lyrical content and the mood that I'm in when I write it is coming from a dark place or from a past experience that was a negative and it's hard to fake that mind frame or stay in that mind frame without other influences coming in. Typically in my case it's alcohol. You can't force it. You know, if you force it, the the listener's gonna hear it. You're gonna hear it. It's it's flat, and there's no raw emotion behind it because you're forcing it. You know, and in order to not force it, sometimes you have to get in a different headspace, and sometimes that's not a good headspace to be in. It's just tough uh, working a nine to five, running a business on the side. Then you got the family aspect as well. You got a fiance. I'm engaged, so it's. All of that mixed with the, the mesh of the LLC and trying to make sure everything's right. And then finding the time to, to help bring somebody else into the loop, which is an equal partner, by the way. All three of them, or all three of us are. Uh, it, just, it just means I'm, I've got the added responsibility. There's people who are willing to share it with me. But for the most part, I, I take the brunt. I take the brunt of, of the majority. Does that burden get extremely heavy sometimes? Sometimes it does. And then I get everybody together and I realize why I took on that burden. To put it quite simply, nobody's doing what we're doing. Nobody's making music like we make. You can't take our music and set it side by side with anybody else because I haven't heard anybody else who has the same style, you know, who, who can bring the same, you know, Flow patterns, rhythm, whatever the hell, you know. Nobody's making music like us. I'm not a rapper, a trapper, or an entertainer. I'm a poet that speaks and beats. My words happen to paint pictures, and that I never really considered this a gift. But it's my positive outlet, my pad and pen, a therapist. You see, for me, it's a curse that I have to vent in the sense. So my shoulders crumble the shell of a man, within my abyss. My eyes are focused from pyramids, staring at a bliss while the transfer of power comes from my fingertips. My tongue is a weapon, ironically. Muscle I flex, but never trying to be my strongest, just trying to be my best. Only me for our fragile complexes. When you look at the kid, be my own pack, you scratch on the table, I'm generous. He's generous, but I never is. Never meant what I said, but now I better say a stronger message ever the heads of any opponents is open to anything new except what's not in my focus is money, bitch, is the dream. The alcohol and the weed will tang out the red cream. I'm a product of what I see when I was coming up. Never had a dollar, but now I'm all grown up. Now I still ain't got a dollar, so God help me yes. if you run up on me. Cause I'm about to lick. I get sick when I get hungry. Run up on the beast, spill my bottle of kerosene, then light a cigarette. Nobody gets hot as me. Uh, we found a lot of the music that we were writing at the time that we sound, we thought was more of our popular stuff and it sounded good to us and it started our kind of like evolution, if you will, was drawing a lot of inspiration from either exes or current females that we were in relationships with or 
whatever you wanted to call what y'all had going on. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like, you know what, we're writing all this good stuff, but it's because it's based around all this negativity that we're going through and it's involving them. So it was like, you're my muse, but at the same time, you're making me sick. So it's like, muse sick. It's like, oh, you're inspiring all this stuff. It's making me sick, but it's making good music. And honestly, I think uh, some of the best music's written by people that are going through it or are depressed. Off that tool, no, no, was it? back on Anima. I don't know if you listen to them at all. Who? Tool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a um, piano riff that was in the background of like that Anima album. Mm. I learned how to play it. Oh, hell yeah. But yeah, it's just based off that chord structure. Change it up a little bit and put my own little twist to it. What was your mindset like when you got when you recorded the human condition? I was doing a lot of drugs, drinking a lot, uh, just kind of down in my solitude, because it was probably probably all started getting written, like starting really like getting serious about music when I broke up with my ex girlfriend. And I was with her for like two years. Broke up with her. It was a bad breakup, man. We was fighting all the time and shit. Even after we broke up, we was fighting and shit. And like, man, I just, that's where all the deep, dark shit came through. I was going through a dark time. My brother, you know, Eclipse, he had broken up with his girl um, that he's with now. You know, she came back, but like, there was a point where he had broken up with her. They was fighting all the time. So we was kind of going through the same shit. Brad had his shit going on. Man. So it's just a whole bunch of dark time in all of our lives. It's always been my outlet, you know. Like I said, I started doing just poetry, honestly, uh, kind of venting. It was, I didn't like therapy. I've, I've been through six different counselors or psychotherapists or whatever because of you know, depression, anxiety, or my, my childhood growing up and the stuff I've seen, and it just didn't help. Also, because I'm a little cynical, uh, and counselors don't like it when you answer questions with questions, so they tend to kind of throw their hands up. Uh, and that led to art being more of an outlet to me for my sketching and my writing. And uh, a lot of it's just a, like a release to me. There's been times, uh, there was a song back in the day whenever Scott and I recently just started getting together and, and Echo uh, doing music that I couldn't think straight. Like literally, I don't know if you've ever had that, the moment where your, your vision kind of start, starts shaking, you feel like you're having a seizure almost. Uh, because of anxiety that I couldn't focus at all until I picked up a pen and as soon as the pen hit the pad it was just like automatic writing but everything became clear uh, and it was more dealing with my inner demons than anything so it's you know, essentially my therapy man we all got issues you know I got tons of undiagnosed shit going through my head but I just don't I ain't gonna go to the doctor and have him put it on paper that that shit's wrong with me fuck that you know my therapy is music. <laughs> you know, I I have uh, I was diagnosed with ADHD when I was like uh, I was like five or six years old, man. I, I was coming out of kindergarten, and they put me on Adderall for the first grade, from for first grade up to sixth or seventh grade, man. I was prescribed Adderall on that shit, like just feeding me fucking amphetamine. Major Depressive Disorder and General Anxiety Disorder 3. They put me on Lexapro. I tried Prozac, Zoloft, Paxil, Seroquel, all that stuff. And it's a fake. 
you know, it's, it's, it's not real to me. So I took myself off of it and I feel a lot better, honestly. I found other ways to deal with it, to cope. Uh, unfortunately, some of that led to drugs and alcohol. Uh, I still drink like a fish sometimes, but it's, uh, it's a coping mechanism, I guess. It's kind of a defense. It's bad shit. I, I, I feel like that's fucked with the chemical imbalances in my head and shit. You know, that's probably caused a lot of fucking damage. But, you know, here we are. Fuck you gonna do? That's the past. I think I made a comment, something about uh, being a Rubik's Cube. Um, there's different sides of me, and I don't know if that has to do more of, with the mental health side or if it's more of just the way my brain fires off. Uh, I got different things going in my head and it's like twisted and it's a different person. Twisted again, it's a different person. Uh, and I kind of let that out in my music. I've been trying to steer away from it a lot here lately because it's like, damn, how much more depressing can you get? You know? and I don't want to, I don't want to live in that or be labeled as like some kind of mental health hip hop artist. I mean, but it's, it's a part of life so I have to address it sometimes. Uh, because again, if, it's my outlet, it's my therapy. If I don't and I bottled it up, I don't know what's gonna happen or if I, I might blow. Oh, I didn't like it, man. I never liked my medicine. It really wasn't until, you know, after elementary school, I'm in the middle of middle school, like sixth or seventh grade. And I'm just kinda thinking one day, you know, like I, I, I was always taking it. I was like, man, I don't even like the way it makes me feel. At that point, it was to the point where I wouldn't take it every day. You know, some days I'd just fucking like, set this shit to the side, try to throw it away, whatever, you know. I wasn't taking it, like, every day, and, like, every day I would take it, I don't like the way it made me feel, you know, like, made me feel, like, man, now I know that it made me feel cracked out, like, that, I didn't like that feeling. So, like, eventually I just stopped taking it, man. And, uh, it was around the time I started smoking weed. So, it was, like, kind of, I replaced one with the other. But it was like a better alternative in my eyes. <laughs> any people around you that had any mental health issues? Yeah, yeah, especially when I was, uh, back when I was doing some other shit. Them motherfuckers had issues, man. Don't hang around crackheads. <laughs> been through a lot, grew up as a minority um, in Baltimore and Rosedale at the time. I, it was probably close to 50-50, but, you know, probably more mixed than, than other neighborhoods with other childhood. Then moving a lot, experiencing a lot of different, different cultures. So being able to really identify who I was and being comfortable with who I am and loving me. I mean, just that alone um, and understanding the person I wanted to be versus maybe the person I was at the time, but the person that I wanted to be, understanding that has probably been the, the biggest struggle that I've had. My drinking, uh, something that's like, an, I guess like it is an escape in a sense. Uh, kind of relaxes me and lets me take my mind off things. Plus, I'm just thirsty and I like to taste a beer, to be honest. I mean, I'll, I'll go out and buy a six-pack of duels before I stop drinking, just because I like the taste. Uh, it's finding the stopping point is always hard for me. <laughs> it's like I want to just keep going because I like it. Uh, that doesn't help me be a better person for them or myself. And it's more of a masking my demons instead of dealing with them and finding a positive outlet for them. So I guess that would be the biggest struggle. And then looking on top of that, that I'm almost 40 and not where I want to be, but heading that way, it's like, geez, man, damn near 40 years old, you still trying to get your shit together? Wake up, you know? What is it, too late? The hands keep steadily ticking away, then redefining the end scene. I watch as the martini topples and the hourglass breaks. The olive's still spinning, but this can't be my last take. So I just keep on grinning like, I'm ready for my close up, Mr. DeVille. Get down the road, not across the street is where the old me chills and you are out of view. So I had two open heart surgeries and uh, they found out, as I understand it, and people have told me I'm wrong, people have told me I'm right. I, I, I have no idea, it's anomalous coronary artery. I tried to Google it, 
still don't understand what it is to this day. So uh, the, the easiest or simplest way that I can put it, or at least the way that it was put to me at one point by one person who I've had others disagree with, long story short, my blood was going the wrong way in my heart. So they had to build a bridge in the mitral valve to correct the blood flow. Then the second one was that they found leaks in the tunnel that they built. Not as much focus around that one. I don't think that one was, was as severe as, as the first. The first was to save my life. Um, the second was more to just correct something that had happened to what they did to save my life. So if music didn't exist, where do you think you'd be? I'd probably, you know, I'd probably do more drugs, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'd probably kill myself. Because without music, man, the music is life. Without music, ain't no life. I know what it's like. I've been feeling kind of low, and I know that every day is not sunny and cold. Yeah, I know sometimes I wanna put an end to it. When I was younger, dream it would be so old, different way. I've been feeling kind of low, and I know that every day is not sunny and cold. Yeah, I know sometimes I wanna put an end to it. When I was younger, dream it would be so old, different way. Ain't been in a good place lately. Been so low, itching for an answer for what I need to break the cycle. Drink and smoke, but it don't really do much no more. I'm reaching my limit, I can feel I'm about to explode Losing my self-control, I lose whatever I hold dearly Can't get my hair right, cause I see the wrong picture so clearly Magnet the bad energy, feel people close and friendly So many hidden agendas, I don't know who's out to get me The voices deep in me, they even look at me different Focus distorted by important decisions, the what is And never knowing why they did what they did I envy Siler from heroes, I wanna see what's inside their heads I've been feeling kinda low And I know that every day is not sunny and dull Yeah, I know sometimes I wanna put an end to it When I was younger, dream it would be so old Different way Upcoming album uh, It's called uh, The Hustle Continues but uh, yeah, it, it came from an expansion really on the first album, the first album being The Human Condition. So when we put that album together, unbeknownst to us, at the time we were going through the track listings, um, we realized that it was telling a story. And uh, while we may not have composed it in a way, song by song, that told that story, uh, we realized very quickly that it, it told a story as we were plotting out, you know, what the album was going to contain versus what we left off. Um, and, and it came together beautifully. So we were thinking, okay, what's next? And really, to me, what's next is going a little more diverse or showing our diversity a little bit more. So The Hustle Continues itself is uh, a little bit of a different vibe overall uh, for the whole tone of the album. And we want to maintain putting together complete albums and not just slapping 10, 15 tracks on an album and calling it an album, but it makes no sense meshed together. It's just a big mess. And because we're diverse, it's difficult uh, to identify which tracks fit versus which tracks don't, how, what's the flow, things like that. Um, as for Ride Alone, which is going to be uh, the first single, I... Hmm, Maybe you could call it the second single because we did drop Astonishing, but, uh, but I'd say really the first single that we're going to promote, push, um, being Right Alone, is uh, We Heard the Beat. And the beat's actually called Right Alone, or the instrumental uh, is called Right Alone. And the second that we heard it, uh, we knew exactly what the song was going to be about. The second that the, the first, oh, <laughs> uh, we knew exactly what we were going to be doing. Just the whole vibe of the track. It was, it's what I call a cigarette song. I've got 
lots of cigarette songs, right? If I'm sitting in a car and I'm cruising, I'm rolling along and, and a certain song comes on, I don't care if I just smoked a cigarette 10 seconds ago, I'm gonna spark another one because I call it my cigarette song or I'm gonna, I'm gonna smoke some weed to it, you know, what have you, so. Not in the car. Yeah, in the car. Open the door, hopping, got the smell of what I was smoking before. Got attacked with the toll, took the console for free road. Now I'm ready for the road. Shifting the first as I ride off slow. Where will I go? I don't even know. For the moment in time, I'm gone. No phone, just me and the music that I put on. That was one of those songs. So, and it also came off the heels of some feedback that I had provided to Pariah. And as a result of that feedback, he wrote the hook. And the way that he wrote the hook was just off the chain. And we knew immediately that that was going to be the hit. Rockets stay so strong that they can't go home, but the ecstasy still holding on. When the less book turn and the wish gets gone. Yeah. yeah. difference between last album and this, this new one coming up? Mm. <clears throat> last album was a lot of dealing with depression, um, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, alcoholism, um, like kind of, that's what it was called, the human conditions, like we all go through it, we all got our struggles, uh, and how we're dealing with it, we kind of laid it out through the CD, um, but we wanted to go from a, that vibe of the depressed anxious, suicidal, uh, codependency, and be like, you know what, this isn't us, it makes me depressed, it makes me down all the time, let's, let's throw some tracks on there that are hype, you know, people can get into, vibe to, whatever they want to, they can party to, and it's like, all right, cool, the hustle continues, so we're going to start dropping content that's more of a upbeat, um, not so much a, oh, woe is me, I'm going to get drunk, blah, 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 and just make it more like a... Let's get high. They say I'm too much. So what up a nuisance? If you piss me off, I'm an asshole. Be ready to do some. Who thunk? I'm a move up when they say do jump. I ain't waiting on you to tell me when I go boom, son. Uh, you, usually we'll come across the beat where we're all just like, all right, that's the one, you know. And we'll fucking start writing to it, you know. Right. Sometimes, you know, well, a lot of times, you know, one or two of us gets... Um, far enough gone, you know, to, to where we don't write shit. Somebody writes a verse for the track, that shit gets thrown on the back burner. And now we got one track, somebody's got a verse to that somebody else needs to finish up, you know. Yeah. That's a lot of times how it happens, you know. We it, we don't we don't really, like, have no motherfucking structure to this shit. There ain't no structure to music. It just comes how it is, you know. Fucking go with the flow. Hopefully, the flow comes. <laughs> you always write your shit with them, or you write your shit on your own? Sometimes? It's just depends. Just depends, man. You never really know. You know, I could be sitting in the studio and something hits me, like this beat hits me, and I'm just like, ah, oh, shit, I got something, you know. And I'll write a fucking 16 in five minutes. Other times, I'll write two bars, and I'll be like, fuck, man, I can't, I can't think of nothing else to write. Writer's block, like a motherfucker. You're rewriting your verse? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? It was fucking fire from the jump. It was fire until I heard his and he stole well, the track. Well, then save that same fucking energy yeah. for the next no, one. No, 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 no. No, he stole the track, so I need to put the energy on this Yo! one so I can steal it back. Oh, my God. Yeah, Even this though is why we fucking end up writing for like six hours and only come up with one song instead of three. <laughs> because you trying to outdo the next man. Be the best man. Do whatever the fuck you got to. But... Save what the fuck you had. We already had a fucking track. Yeah, well, what do you think I was trying to dig for? Like, I know you dug I could, one. You I, brought it back. No, 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 no. I knew I couldn't write one as hard as what y'all were spitting, so I was like, I think I got one. <laughs> you had it stored in the memory. I did. No, I had it stored on paper. Yeah. I loved, I loved it. I just couldn't find the beat that I spit it to. So now that's a blessing. Because uh, now that I couldn't find the beat, I can now use it for... Rewrite his whole shit. Album. 
Are you actually gonna hit the measurement this time, though? Yeah, I say run up on the beach, spill my bottle of kerosene, then light a cigarette. Nobody is hot as me. Obviously. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm on fire. And that's why he's rewriting this shit. And he's sweating. <laughs> that's, Ow! that's just because he's fat. <laughs> Curious George looking ass. Alright, well, apparently I do have to get this whole verse in here. Yeah, that's the only two bars I got, though, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Can't think of nothing. Bro. Is this some typical music type shit? Everybody trying to outdo each other? Yeah. No, Very it's much. usually these two. Kind of. Bro brotherly, brotherly competition? Man, yep. that's... Man, this Actually, motherfucker... Actually, no, this motherfucker right here. Like, I'll spit some shit, and he's like, yo, I have to rewrite everything I just did. And I'm like, why? Because he comes with some fire. You heard that shit. That shit was that fucking shit was fire. Funny. But I'm like, why? He was like, because I don't feel like I'm on the same level as you. He just kind of comes in and does what the fuck he feels. Yeah, I've never I've never made him. I still, some, somehow I still end up getting my shit done before them. And they're just like, you reworked your shit three times. How the fuck did you finish before us? And half the time I'm sitting here just fucking trying to think, you know, with my phone down, not even writing shit. You know, and me, me bragging right now, you know, this, I guarantee I ain't gonna finish this track tonight and they gonna fucking record their shit and I'm just gonna be sitting And then we're gonna like, be waiting for I'll start, month. I'll start getting all that shit now and then now I can't write shit, you know, something like that. Karma's a bitch. Real talk. Karma's a bitch. Karma's a bitch. Karma's a bitch. Karma's a bitch. Real talk. Accurate. 100. Three MCs hmm. in a group that's, you know, pretty, um... Braggadocious. Uh, who is the best MC out of you three? Pariah. Why? Wow. Say that again in the camera. <laughs> Pariah. Why is Pariah the best MC? Because he he got them flow patterns. He got the lyrics. Like that motherfucker is be hitting that shit on point. Yep. I I think I'd have to say the same thing as much as it hurts me to say it. But Pariah. Why does it hurt you to say that? Because he's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wasn't really ever a solo artist, uh, just I used to mess around making beats, I played piano, uh, played drums when I was like in fifth grade, and music's just been in my family. My dad used to be a bass player, my grandma played piano and the organ in the church. Uh, he worked with my brother, he clips. He read some of it, and I went over to his, his, uh, his parents' house back in the day, and uh, wrote a verse down, and he was like, alright, that's dope, spit it. Okay. He would bring Pariah to the studio and, you know, we'd be chopping it up. we always been doing tracks together, always been doing shows together. And I guess he just liked the way I delivered it because I always liked that Midwest, East Coast kind of mashup. Pariah, the level to his lyrical artistry surpasses anybody I've seen in a long time. I like East Coast lyrics, but like the Midwest chopper flow. Man. I ain't never heard nobody spit. Chop up the beat the way that he does, man. It's his flow patterns, his delivery, man. Nobody hit that shit like it. I like writing like I'm playing drums. Uh, I think that's a big part of it with the rhythm. You can kind of feel it in your chest. Uh, so that's always the way I wrote. Man, that motherfucker's a hell of a sick. That motherfucker know like motherfucker karate, jujitsu, muay thai, like whatever the fuck, man. That motherfucker. Fuck you up if you fuck with me. <laughs> I don't know, man. I deliver where I can on the music. I, I feel like I'm talented lyrically. I come with the wordplay, but I'm, I'm more of a well-rounded individual. That dude is a cerebral assassin. I'm sorry. It's... He got the lyrics, man. And he fucking got the engineer capabilities, man. That motherfucker master of track like no other, man. Lyric, his lyrical content, and here his delivery especially lately has been like, wow, where the hell did that come from? Why have you been hiding? No, you know, all in all, he, he spit some hot shit. I ain't even gonna lie. The vocabulary that he has, dude, like his intelligence blows my mind. He's definitely wiser than his ears. And I'm the old head out of the group. I'm damn near pushing 40, you know, and he's just now breaking into his 30s, but it's like, Jesus, man. I feel like sometimes he's older than me. I call him my little brother, but sometimes I feel like he's my big brother. To summarize me as an artist, somebody's gonna have to listen to all my music and then tell me so I can tell y'all.
Echo has all the talent in the world. Writing masterpieces. Some of the stuff he writes and spits is just off the wall. I'm going, what the hell? I just want them to feel my music, you know, every day. You know, I don't know what's going through my head half the time. So I try to put it down, you know, I try to put it in rhyme, but, you know, it's still all scrambled up, so I don't know if you fucking know. He comes up with stuff from completely different perspective that I think are very difficult for, at least me, like when I just listen to him, I think he's thinking completely different. Well, lyrically, that's insane, but it makes you laugh at the same time. And I think that that's beautiful. I, it, that's great. I hear a lot of the same stuff that I deal with mentally in his lyrics, but in a different way. Everything you've ever been through, everything that I couldn't say to somebody, I put it around, you know. I feel like that's one thing he offers a lot, uh, a lot in is perspective, which comes across when he's writing stuff. The structure to a song, you know, usually it's like, you know, uh, chorus, hook, chorus, bridge, chorus, hook, or whatever. It goes out the window with stuff. He just kind of flows with it and somehow it works every single time. This guy's got talent. He, he's a savant, I guess, in, in a sense. Lay his stuff down. It may take, you know, it may take a while because we all got to get through it, right? After he writes it, but I mean, he comes in, lays it down. The energy there, the delivery, the lyrics, all on point. I can't say something directly to somebody. Maybe I make a song about it. You know, send them the track. Fucking be like, yep, this your track. You know, I actually got a song in the works. It's called Yo Song to a special somebody. That's his biggest weakness. Effort. Maybe it's because you always stared down from atop the peak. Still never saw me. Because I was deep in the shadows, valley, where roses break through concrete. Brushed off both my shoulders and created ash heaps. Look to the left of the right of me, see him burning on all sides. Even with blurred visions, realize, realize, realize. But I still listen to him. Even though I know they'll pierce my eardrum with the sound of a thousand music boxes all chiming off tune and out of time. Screaming out some garbled transmission melting in the seventh circle of Dante's Inferno. Static crashes on my satellite like waves of a serpent sex scene and twists me into a double helix. I do instrumentals for a group uh, in the past. He goes, but I've always wanted to, to write and, and do something. It's like, oh, okay, cool. Well, come, come by the studio and, and do it. He spit his first verse and I said, did you ever ask them to do music? He goes, nah, I just, I never thought about it. They never really gave me a shot. And I said, well, you're fucking signed. <laughs> <laughs> first verse, <laughs> that's all it took. And it was the, the water bottle of vodka. Oh right. yeah, um, yeah, that was hilarious. You know, <laughs> thought I was getting a drink of water to freshen up my vocal cords <laughs> at the time this dude was a uh, underage <laughs> and he had a bunch of water bottles in his bedroom i grabbed the wrong one apparently it was his communion <laughs> big old chug of that like, <clears throat> vodka yep <laughs> and then he was initiated <laughs> nice. it was right taka there. too that cheap shit <laughs> 12 dollar plastic toxic. handle toxic yeah <laughs> That's All right. Okay. So here's what I do. I take a king size paper. Will you please? And I fold the ends. And I rip off this little thing here. Bam. And then I fold this in because that's the end I'm lighting, and I don't want it to flame up when I light it. You know. So I just, I just fold that so it doesn't flame up. Double bag because it's stanky. Finding the right nug is half the battle. Finding the right nug is half the bottom. This is a good size nug, you know. You know, that should that should feed everybody. Bam, 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 bam. Whatever, man. I feel like I need some extra, so I'm gonna throw some extra in there. So you get it all kind of evened out, you know. And you just kind of, just kind of grab it. You just kind of roll it down, you know. And 
and some will fall out. That's gonna happen. No way of stopping it. Pick it up. And then you just it. tuck it and just. Whew. Yeah, if you were on the other side of me, you would have seen that a lot better. But yeah, it is what it is. That's all it is. And they always pregnant. Always pregnant. I don't know how to roll it any other way. I'm okay with it. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, well, I don't even know I'll where I'm supposed to go. Thing. I mean, I got to Music's one. always been my therapy. I'm very deep, apparently. It's scaring me. Where in the fuck has it carried me? Can barely see. I'm lost and live a little too carelessly. Can't bear to see the fact that life is never really fair. It seems emotion says he carried me. Made my mind up carefully. Struck the match in like it's like now this house in kerosene. I'll set the world's polarity and try and gain some clarity. But every way there is a see it. In the end, they bury me. I'm a twisted individual. Not many can compare to me. Visions of it cynical for me. A good mood is rarity. It scares me. Rarely do I even enjoy the air that I breathe. I did this to myself. I can't really blame my parenting. Issues with attachment on both sides of the spectrum. Switch moods like it's magic. Hope dies with depression. And then I gotta figure out the right. Oh, when you hit that. 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 Oh, that. Oh, that. I breathe on. Yeah. Oh, that's just oh, oh, I just got the stomach virus all of a sudden. <laughs> what did like, you think of that, Pariah? Like that was nasty. Yo, keep that same energy. <laughs> I'm just saying. Did I inspire something? Maybe. <laughs> Did he find a beat the rabbit too? I think so. Did he chop it the fuck up? Cajun Ninja. No? Anybody? You? Yeah, I need a camera on him the whole time. I'm going to bring somebody else in. What kind of Cajun? Cajun Ninja. No, you know nothing about that? Apparently not. Now you make me look stupid. I'm animated. That is true. You are a figment of our imagination. I'm not sure I should take that, but I resemble that remark. You do. It's funny how it can be two places at one time because this is the schizophrenic part that's writing the verse and the body is over there doing the filming. Bitch, did you just call me a dummy like you ventriloquist? I kind of feel salty because no. you insinuated your hand is up my ass. Not at all because somehow you produced that verse. And you didn't even kiss me. Well, I offered to buy dinner. <laughs> you stupid. Yeah, I'm the stupid one. I am. I am. <laughs> it's me. I'm stupid. Everybody wants to take away. But I tell them, yo, this ain't Burger King. We making movements, and if you come in too, bitch, stay out my way. We do it my way. Yo, everybody wants to take away. But I tell them, yo, this ain't Burger King. We making movements, and if you come in too, bitch, stay out my way. We do it my way. Yeah. They say I'm too much, so what up a nuisance? If you piss me off, I'm an asshole, be ready to do some. Who thunk? I'ma move up when they say do jump. I ain't waiting on you to tell me when I go boom, son. It's the blow up, I'ma show them who the coldest when I go. I'm lacing poems like a young Edgar Allan Poe, and you know it. My outlet is my music, maybe depressed when I do it. They say do something different, no. I'ma bottle it up for the boot when I go in. Fences. Can't understand that I do what I can so I'ma just do me and say fuck them bitch My way or the highway That's the way the cabbage They say they way the best Everybody seems to know the syntax Spin that chop it up and screw it Tell me how to do it I can put your name up on it Say that you produced it Cue it out should I hit this rip this You want some bitch shit you can tell I can't 
face look like the grimace You can tell me how to start, but never how to finish Cause you ain't never had a payday in me I aim for big shit, come after music, I wouldn't risk it You get fisted, you don't want that smoke like brisket You the chicken, here's your biscuit Ain't never seen it through my eyes, it's just some third party therapy Expressing, bringing clarity Harris. Never be close to the surface, scratching them licks, yo, they were scared of me Reflections that make you feel was just my daily routine They been there for me, guess I speak it into existence Mental midget, catch the pivotally top and crack them digits So indifferent, I'm intrinsic with it, dig it Auto make, let's be specific, I lift them shots from the index digit The pick and scratch that sweat, business saves that game Recognize game, see you playing in simplistic So I dug the gutter just to shit on tracks and put it through temples, bitches Everybody wants it Tell them, yo, this ain't Burger King We making movements And if you coming to bitch Stay out my way We do it my way Yo, everybody wants to take way But I tell them, yo, this ain't Burger King We making movements And if you coming to bitch Stay out my way We do it my way Yeah